Today's video is brought to you by a donation from a subscriber. He wanted to know why don't the so-called African American resemble Africans from Africa? Now while doing the research, I fell down a rabbit hole that reaffirmed my beliefs that the African American is an artificial construct. And as a result, I thought it would be best suited to title this video, Why Did They Create the African American? Believe it or not, the African American is indigenous to the Americas. This includes North America, South America, and its surrounding islands. But unfortunately, the African American would rather hold firm and romanticize the root slave narrative his oppressor gave him. In my video, Why Black Children Inherit Dust, I informed the African American he's not really a citizen. I received a lot of backlash for that statement, so before I begin this presentation, I want to briefly elaborate on the quasi-citizen status of the African American. Now, as I stated many times before, the Dred Scott case states no person of African descent, whether or not emancipated from slavery, could be a citizen of a state. Some people proudly argue that the 14th Amendment granted them citizenship, but my argument is that no Supreme Court case or documentation directly overruled the Dred Scott case. For example, we have the case of George Stenney, who was the youngest person in American history to be executed, and in 2014, a judge directly overturned the ruling of the conviction of that young boy. Someone has to explain how we have presidential candidate Mike Huckabee that stated that he thinks that there's a law out there somewhere that says black people are not human, and on another occasion he states that black people aren't technically citizens. In other words, African Americans are citizens only in name, but not law. Then we have MSNBC Harris Perry stating that blacks are still not seen as American citizens. Even to this day, we still have whites-only swimming pools and segregated proms. How much do these people have to spit in the face of the African American for him to get the message he is not a true citizen? James Lowen wrote a book illustrating that in America today, we still have sundown towns where if the so-called African American citizen gets caught after sundown, he will be killed. For those who still boastfully claim that the 14th Amendment made them citizens, how do you explain the Naturalization Act of 1870 that came after it? What was the purpose of that act? How do you explain the fact that as recent as 2013, we have African Americans still marching and protesting for Voting Rights Act? If y'all are citizens and the 15th Amendment gave y'all rights to vote, why do y'all need a Voting Rights Act? The black American was once a productive and innovative member of society, but now he has become the African American an artificial construct slowly self-destructing and driving himself into extinction. The only duty we owe to history is to rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it, Oscar Wilde. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. What we need to do is flood the world, flood the world, flood the world. The 14th Amendment to the Constitution, ratified in 1868 following the Civil War. As barbaric as it may sound today, the black slaves, prior to the conclusion of the Civil War, were legally considered to be property, with none of the rights or privileges of free-born people, only duties. The money interests took advantage of America's desire to free the slaves and found a way to use the swiftly adopted post-war constitutional amendments to enslave all of the people. The deceit is in the wording of both 13th and 14th Amendments. You will note that the 13th Amendment provides that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. But why the emphasis on involuntary servitude? Isn't it the same thing as slavery? Sure it is. But they had to mention the concept of involuntary servitude because they wished to retain another type of slavery, voluntary servitude. Voluntary servitude is an ancient and established concept. It was the way serfs became subjects to their lords during feudal times in England and other European countries. It was a way for free men to earn a living at a time when all property was held by a select few and thus anyone who wanted to farm and support their family had first to agree to be subject to a lord of the land. Our forefathers hated this concept and designed our Constitution 
to exclude titles of nobility, making all Americans sovereign. The 14th Amendment turned the intention of the founders on its ear by making voluntary servitude a requirement for former slaves to gain the rights already guaranteed to free-born United States citizens. When the slaves were released from their involuntary servitude following the war, their status was changed from that of being property to that of being a person, but being a person still entitled them to none of the rights associated with citizenship. So the 14th Amendment ostensibly was written to provide the former slaves with the same constitutional rights of free-born American citizens, but only if they agreed first to become subject to the jurisdiction of the corporate United States, making oneself paramountly, that is, first subject to the jurisdiction of the laws of the United States, however, limits access to parts of the Bill of Rights, as we'll explain in a moment. But first remember, anyone who voluntarily subjects himself to the laws or jurisdiction of another is, in every way, obligated to abide by the terms of any contracts or laws established by whomever establishes the rules of the contract. In simple terms, this meant that the former slaves became subjects first to the United States and secondly to the state in which they lived. They had no sovereignty whatsoever. This status had never existed in the United States prior to that time. The 14th Amendment created a new class of citizenship in the United States, a second class citizenship. Up until 1868, every American was a paramount citizen of their state, and by virtue of that, also a citizen of the United States, with full individual sovereignty as guaranteed by Amendments 9 and 10 in the Bill of Rights. But so-called naturalized citizens, or 14th Amendment citizens, are paramountly subject to all laws of the United States, and, having no status as freeborn citizens, have no access at all to the unenumerated rights retained for the people by Articles 9 and 10 of the Bill of Rights. That's because, in order to get any rights at all, they had to subject themselves to the jurisdiction of the corporate United States, which left them no unenumerated rights. All right, so now let's take a look at why they created the African American. Now there's some bullet points that I want to discuss. The first is describing the African American, why they created the African American, why the African American is not African, comparing pictures, creating zombies, dogs lives matter, and lastly, our final thoughts. Now let's first describe the African American. The African American is a creation of European think tanks and secret societies. He has been disconnected from nature and in general he has no survival skills. If he were to be placed suddenly in the wilderness, he would not survive. The African American does not produce his own food, he does not discover, mine and refine any natural resources, and sadly, he does not even educate his own children. By and large, the African American hates the truth and shuns the occult, while his oppressors use the occult to stay in power. The average African American is cold-blooded and brutal towards each other, but loving towards foreigners and his oppressors. For the most part, he does not know who his enemy is and tries to be accepted by the people that treat him the worst. The typical African American does not know where in Africa he's from. Typically, the African American is an advocate for diversity, but no one wants to include him. In general, the African American women have been stripped of shame, modesty, and are racially dead. For the most part, they hate black genetics and are currently the number one killer of the black race by way of abortion. The African Americans that don't fit this description are unfortunately in the minority. In general, the African American males are simps, manginas, and white knights. Currently they have reached a new low by suggesting the black woman is God. The African American men that don't fit this description are unfortunately in the minority. The so-called African American will always give excuses why he can't break free and be independent. He is easily discouraged if a roadblock is put in his way. And if a black leader gets assassinated, so does the mission. The African American shuns the idea of monolithic thought. While foreigners use monolithic thought to practice group economics to milk the African American community, 
while boycotting it at the same time. The African American has no free will and can be easily controlled by using entertainers, politicians, pastors, and black women. The aforementioned are all gatekeepers to white hegemony. They help keep the status quo and prevent change. The artificial construct, African American, is a creation similar to Frankenstein, an artificial European but stripped of its language, culture, humanity, and lineage. Now let's talk about why they created the African American. Simply put, the African American was created to slowly self-destruct and rid the world of himself so foreigners can set up an environment that is conducive to their way of living and help drive the African American into extinction. The bankers have skillfully created the African American. The main purpose of the African American is to build the empires of others and to take the earnings he makes from building to buy those people's products. Alright, so now let's talk about why the African American is not African. The African American holds on to the theory that all life came from Africa, yet Europeans, Asians, and other races don't claim to be African. Nothing about the African American is African. He has no African language, customs, religion, no African citizenship, and to make matters worse, the African American can't name what part of Africa he's from. Ironically, the people in the continent of Africa don't call themselves African. Only the black American holds firm to this title. Other races don't claim to be associated to another race just based on skin color, hair texture, and phenotype. If the Europeans brought African slaves to America, humiliated and dehumanized them, why would they put them on the currency? Let's take a look at some images of black Americans on the US currency. If blacks were brought to America as slaves and had no rights and were seen as property, why did Europeans bother to create laws that stated interracial marriage is illegal, Indians and Africans are to be called Negro, and all non-Christians will be slaves? How exactly did African chattel slaves turn to slave owners themselves? It's well known that so-called black people had black slaves. This fact only makes sense if the black slave owners were native to the land and they had African slaves. The African American continues to run away from the fact that he's indigenous to America. Here are a few questions that the African American will refuse to answer. Where does the word African come from? Why don't the people in Africa call themselves African? If you're an African American, what part of Africa are you from? Since you believe the transatlantic slave narrative, where are the slave ships at? What force was cut down to build these slave ships? Where are the museums that are showcasing the slave ships? How did a slave survive a one to three month trip across the Atlantic where it's freezing cold, where they're packed like sardines and surrounded by urine, blood, feces, and filth? Also, if more than half of the slaves died during the trip, that would mean there was no return on investment. So why continue using expensive slave ships? What would be more easier and logical? Transporting millions of people across the Atlantic or using the people that are already on the land? What African nation is claiming African Americans? Why has no African nation sought reparations for slavery? These questions will frustrate the average African American, and he will be either ready to fight you, curse you out, or run away. No matter how much education the African American receives, no matter how many clues are given to him, he still wholeheartedly believes the narrative by his oppressor, that his roots are in Africa. Every religious belief given to the African American places him in a foreign land. The Moors point to their roots in Morocco, the Hebrew Israelites and Christians point to Israel, and the Nation of Islam point to Mecca. So in this section we're going to be comparing pictures, but I'm not going to be giving any commentary because I want people to compare for themselves and make up their mind if the African American is indeed African.
All right, so in this section, we're going to be talking about creating zombies. Now, the elites and the oligarchs have already chosen the people that will be the zombies, and they've already set in motion the propaganda campaigns to dehumanize this race of people. Let's take a look at this first article. It says, brain and eyeball eating cannibal who hacked homeless man to death says sorry. In this article, it says, hard eating Maryland cannibal pleads guilty to murder. Here in the Huffington Post, it says, Rudy Eugene, no bad salts, only marijuana found in face eater toxicology tests. Then we have the New York Times reporting, there's no time to rest until the last zombie in Africa is toast. Here we have a screenshot of The Walking Dead, where in all the intros, you have a close-up of a black zombie. Currently, we have what they call the Zika virus that has been spreading. Here in the USA Today, they claim that it's scarier than they initially thought. Here is a map of how they believe the Zika virus spread. There has been new reports now that the Zika virus is not spread by mosquito, but is sexually transmitted. Here in this article it says, is Zika virus or the Tdap vaccine causing birth defects in Brazil? Currently the Zika virus has reached North America and Nevada health officials have recently reported their first case of the Zika virus. For more information you can do a Google search for the 30 American cities most at risk for Zika virus. Here's an illustration of the abnormal head size of the children that are born with the Zika virus. Here's another image, and here's another image. Now the Zika virus birth defects are not the only birth defects that you should worry about. I do recommend you do a Google search for depleted uranium birth defects. I also recommend you do a Google search for birth defects from Agent Orange. Now there's also something called Jigger disease that hasn't been getting any mainstream coverage, and I do recommend you go and educate yourself about it just in case you're traveling to a third world country or somehow this becomes the next widespread disease. In this section, I want to talk about why according to white society, a dog's life is more valuable than the African American. Here we have a man who got a six and a half year prison sentence for killing a dog, while George Zimmerman got no prison time. Here we have a story of a man who got 11 years in prison for cocaine that killed the police dogs, while the police officers that shot Tamir Rice Got no charges, no prison time. Here we have another story of a man who got prison time for killing a dog, but the officer that choked out and killed Eric Garner got no prison time, no charges. Here we have a 16 year old boy who shot a retired police dog and got 23 years in jail, but a white police officer that shot an unarmed couple through their windshield 137 times? Eh, no charges, no prison time, let him go free. Here we have a story of a man who was jailed for stabbing a bull terrier to death, but the police officers that shot and killed Kamani Gray? No charges. Alright, so now let's take a look at my final thoughts. When we take a closer look at the so-called African American, we find a group that is easily distracted, easily discouraged. A group that is not focused on generational wealth and survival, but on building another people's empire and consuming their products. A group that is looking for a messiah and fails to understand that change is a group effort and revolution is hard work and requires sacrifices. The African American has no control over their women, who are currently the number one killers by way of abortions. A female that has been socially engineered to lack shame, modesty, to hate black genetics and black leadership. A female that has become the gatekeeper of white hegemony, for it rewards her for being a single mother, for having children out of wedlock, for divorcing, and for being strong and independent. It goes without saying that not all African American women and men are part of the problem, where well, the vast majority are. A toxic mindset has spread throughout the so-called African American community, similar to a virus. What the African American fails to understand is that if he's going in a direction unhindered, no roadblocks, no smoke screens, then he's going in the wrong direction. And it doesn't matter how many Afrocentric scholars and books he quotes, it still won't change the out of Africa theory into a fact. How many times do these people have to spit in the face of the African American for him to realize they're not his friends and are not looking out for his best interest? Of course it goes without saying that not all white people and foreigners are bad, however, they're not going to stop what they're doing to protect you from the racist elites and bankers. And most definitely, they're not going to revert back to their non-white status just to show the African American they have good intentions. The so-called African American is the Aboriginal American. He is the Native American. Now, can we build alliances with African nations? Of course. But to claim Africa is our homeland is not only ignoring the truth, but it is throwing away our heritage and history. 
There's a saying that the mind is like a parachute. It only works when open. And it is only when the African American opens his mind will the process of breaking the chains of oppression begin. I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to share, like, subscribe, and leave your comments below and let me know what your thoughts are on why they created the African American. Until next time, this is Conspiracy Dude. So I know some of you guys are wondering who will be the next president of the United States. Some of my family members have told me that they're going to vote for Bernie Sanders.